All right, getting ready to start working on uh, getting the front brake kit actually put on the coupe and uh, started out just by uh, going over the, the actual spindle itself, the super bell spindle, uh, getting ready to put the uh, Wilwood kit on it. And uh project's been sitting up for a while, so I've got a lot of, you know, a little bit of surface rust in some places, so I'm taking care of that first before I actually put this together. But uh, all this stuff's going to come back apart again and and uh, be actually painted and finished uh, the, the correct colors and all that kind of good stuff. So this is really more of a dry fit, make sure all the parts fit correctly and that I've got everything. But uh, first thing I did was just uh, take a little scotch bright. you know, uh, this is a... Uh, the fine course uh, pad and uh, just use the light speed you know something about like oh about like this and uh, just went around all the surfaces and just took off all the surface rust and uh, now I'm getting ready to just uh, apply a little PB blast and just to uh, uh, just as a little bit of surface protectant actually this is really more used for penetrating lube but it works great for for surface protection uh, I've also got another option you know, the other option that I've got is uh, this Gibbs brand uh, lubricant actually uh, the great part about this is in fact they're probably going to use this instead of the, uh, the PB blaster uh, retracts it repels water and it's also uh, at the same time as it repels dust. It doesn't build up dust on it like uh, WD-40 or some other leaves might. So just gonna cover this up and, uh, and then we'll get started on putting some of the other parts together. All right, well, back to uh, getting this front end together. Uh, where we left off was, uh, here's the bracket that actually fits over that holds the caliper. It covers the actual uh, spindle mount of the spindle itself. Uh, and then it uses uh, boats, bolts from uh, package 230-10432. Uh, these are some big hex bolts. And uh, uh, first thing I'm noticing is they've got the, the nuts and the washers actually behind them. And the way the instructions read is that you're actually supposed to have this behind the, uh, uh, the actual spindle itself. So uh, that's going to work perfectly fine on the right side uh, where there's no steering arm, uh, but on the left side where there's an upper and lower steering arm, these bolts will actually go into the uh, super bell steering arms uh, on the top and the bottom. So let's uh, let's mock that up. So we already got one on there. This is for the upper. And of course you'd want to use uh, some Loctite at a minimal on this because there's not really a, a locking fastener here. I'm going to have to potentially call Willwood and ask him about that. But, uh, uh, but essentially it just uh, the bolts fit into the uh, the super bell steering arms. We have to just wiggle it a little bit, get the seat all the way. And one of the things I'm noticing is that uh, these actually recess down inside of the uh, the billet black plate. There's a recessed fitting here. So the bolts actually sit flush up against it, which is good because that's going to suck it up a little closer against the hub and uh, keep that from, from rubbing. Now the bottom one that I've got is actually a dropped steering arm, so not really any different in terms of setup, but it goes on the same way essentially. Put one on the other side. And I've already got a lot of this front suspension kind of loosely together, so you know, you start working on this, you'll probably have to kind of adjust things a little bit, take some slack out to uh, get things to line up. But, uh, but that's the first step.
we'll take a break from here. All right, I've got it all buttoned up, and uh, now I've got went ahead and pulled all these back out, put any C's on them, and uh, put them back in. And what I noticed as I was putting in, uh, especially on this one, is uh, some of the bolts uh, may be a little hard to tell. This one looks looks fair, but you can see that you may need to chase these down with a uh, with a die and uh, just to kind of clean up the threads a little bit before you put them into the to the uh, steering arm, and that'll uh, keep from. Uh, potentially hopefully getting something cross threaded but uh, that's the first step that's uh, the brackets pretty much all on and uh, so far so good all right next step is to actually put together the hub assembly and uh, this is the hub uh, it's a all aluminum piece uh, dust cover is already installed out of the kit and uh, it's got the um, watertight uh, o-ring on it also and here are the studs that come with the kit. Uh, they're 12 point uh, basically bolts that come in from the back side of the hub and uh, you'll run these down. Uh, it says to tighten them up to uh, 77 foot-pounds which ought to be real fun to do given that there's nothing to hold on to at the moment. So anyhow, um, so you'll want to do that probably once you got a little more ability to uh, get some torque on the, uh, the bolts. But uh, uh, so those will run down, and uh, I did notice that as, as I was putting in some of these studs, uh, some studs fit some holes just a little better. Uh, so rather than taking a chance on cross threading it, I just kind of went through the package and uh, picked the stud that seemed to go through the, the with the least resistance uh, as, as to uh, not damage any of the threads. And uh, the bolt pattern on the hub either supports a uh, five lug, four and a half inch pattern or a four and three quarter pattern which is what I've got set up here. So I'm going to go ahead and run these down and then the next step will be to actually put this bearing together and pack it and uh, get it ready to install it. Okay well got uh, got the hubs both of them actually threaded up with uh, their appropriate studs and it kind of gives you an idea what it's going to look like but uh, um, one of the things I can tell you is that you're going to want to chase and tap um, the uh, studs into the hub before you put them together. Uh, they're half inch, uh, 12 point, uh, half inch dash 20 uh, thread, thread turn uh, threads. So uh, take a tap and die and run them through uh, each of these and uh, the gray you're seeing here is just the uh, anti seize that's that I put on the uh, threads before I put them through. But uh, um, you'll be a lot better off if you tap and chase them than if you just try and put one of the studs through. If, they, if one of them happens to be just a little galled up, it's going to tear up these aluminum threads, and you don't want to tear up this piece. That's that's uh, that's expensive. So the other thing I'll recommend is that uh, before you actually put this all back together and get get any further is make sure you got your studs um, in the right spot and uh, so like in my case I've got a mock-up wheel here so you can see uh, it actually goes through and, and lines up appropriately and you want to make sure you've done that so that you didn't get a stud in the wrong hole one in a four and a half inch slot and one in a four and a three and a quarter inch slot so uh, but uh, here you go that's, uh, that's the hub assembly. The uh, actual next step is to prepare the bearing for the rears. And uh, I'll actually pack the bearings offline and uh, get those ready. And then uh, we'll go through the next step. All right. Well, uh, spent some time working on getting the hubs put, get, put together. So here's one that's basically ready to go. Um, got the uh, lugs in it. No good grease in the front yet. I'll do that at the time we get ready to do the front bearings. But rear bearings in, rear seal is in. It's just a Timken seal. You can get those pretty much any local auto parts store. But uh, that's the uh, the hub right there. Uh, next up in the instructions is actually to take the rotor and the rotor adapter, which is this guy, and it fits up flush behind it. <laughs> 